Hey guys, Jordan Malik from Honest Online Selling. Uh, if you have already sold books on Amazon or you're thinking about selling books on Amazon or other media like VHS tapes, DVDs, etc., you don't want to watch this quick video. Uh, lately, I've been hearing a lot of uh, dissent from other sellers saying, hey, the book market is saturated. There's too many sellers on Amazon. There's not enough supply where I am locally and, and it's dead. And I don't think that's true at all. Um, based on where i've been in my region especially the northeast corridor um book selling is alive and well and there's a lot of uh profit to be had uh and i want to show you some examples today so let's just start with the vhs tape market now, i've heard the vhs tape market is dead and that's a myth now that's mostly true but it, it's it's somewhat not true because uh, i tend to still do extremely well from uh still sealed out of print uh, vhs tapes uh, the more obscure, the better. Stay away from recent popular titles. So when you're ready to scan uh, a stack of VHS tapes at your local library sale or thrift store or whatever, stay away from the stuff that's already been popular from the 80s, 90s, and present. You know, Top Gun is never going to sell for more than a dollar a tape uh, on Amazon or $2 or what have you. Um, uh, Fatal Attraction, etc. Anything that you know that's that's already been popular, it's already a zillion copies that are out there, is not going to sell for much. Uh, also stay away, uh, excuse me, um, also stay away from paying more than $2 maximum per tape now, as an example, uh, I bump into tapes like this all the time. Here's a, a an example, Gia, and this is a, you know this is what caught my eye because it was an unknown title. I hadn't heard of it yet, and this was still sealed. It was from the year 2000, and I sold it for eleven dollars, and I only paid about a dollar for it. Um, so that's an example there, and you can see um, uh, what the tape looks like here. So primarily stay away from used VHS tapes but when you find new ones and the title is something you haven't heard of before definitely check it out and the second myth I hear a lot of is the cassette tape market is dead and that really goes along with the VHS tapes uh, look for still sealed out-of-print titles the more obscure the better and just because the bestseller rank is poor doesn't mean that it's it's not gonna sell uh, for instance I ran across this uh, still sealed Harry Potter and the half-blood prince book of uh, Book six, audio cassette. It was uh, a series of audio cassettes and it was um, uh, packaged brand new. Of course, this is back in January of 2011 when I found it. Now, I know um, some people will turn their nose up at that because it's been over a year. And as you can see, the sales rank is pretty uh, poor. Well, com comparably pretty poor. It's 1.5 million. But, you know, Amazon's fees, long term storage fees for holding things like media, are pretty low. I mean, we're talking about pennies. Uh, per month. So um, this sold for fifteen dollars and fifty four cents. Again, I paid a dollar for it. So my ROI is you know six seven hundred percent on that. Uh, another myth is that uh, sellers, uh, uh, some sellers complain, hey, can't compete with penny sellers. Now, the reason why that's a myth, particularly if you're an Amazon FBA seller, is one of the reasons. There's an urgency with textbook buyers that third party merchants will never meet. Um, and I sell all my books via Amazon FBA for that reason. I'm going to show you an example. Here's a book, Introduction to Statistics and Data Analysis. And you'll see that um, this sold for $24.95. But the interesting thing is when you look at the uh, book itself, the third party sellers are selling it for three pennies. Okay. But the, um, the, uh, Amazon Prime sellers who are selling it used are selling it for $27 and up. And that's because most textbook buyers or, or many textbook buyers need it like right away. And they're not going to risk waiting for a non-FBA seller. They're not going to buy it from a third party seller, even though the price is so low. Three cents was $3.99 shipping. They're not going to buy it from them because, you know, ships in one to two business days, etc. But these are from third party merchants that the uh, buyer probably hasn't heard of. And they feel more confident paying the higher price as they did here and getting it directly from Amazon. And here's another more extreme example of this. Here's a textbook uh, that I picked up used for a dollar or two. It sold for $21.40. And you can see here that, again, uh, the used copies are going for considerably less from the third party merchants. Right? When we look at the third party merchants, they're selling it for $8.99 plus $4. It looks like at the time I was the only FBA seller offering the item used, and that's why I got a considerably higher price for it. So You'll see in the case of both books that the buyers selected second day on this order or the order I showed you before next day. And that's where when you're an Amazon FBA seller, 
the third party merchants aren't going to be able to compete with you. Now, the fourth and last myth that I hear is that thrift stores are all dried up of inventory. Uh, that's simply not true just because of the sheer volume of books that are out there. If you consider even just the one or two percent of books that are sold um, in thrift stores that are actually have a much higher value on Amazon, I think 99% of what's out there, of all the books that you could find at thrift stores, library sales, etc., at yard sales, 99% of it's pulp. If you just take the remaining 1%, that's still a lot of books. And there's still a lot of inventory out there. Uh, gems always fall through the cracks. You really have to look for them. Um, and lazy uh, booksellers tend to look over the non-barcoded books. That's books without a barcode. If you have a uh, scouting service that you use, like I use Neatoscan, and I also use Profit Bandit on my iPhone, um, I uh, will find a book that doesn't have a barcode, and I'll uh, type in the ISBN number and look up the value that way. So a lot of booksellers tend to get lazy. They just um, pass over a book if it doesn't have a barcode. You can be the aggressive bookseller and remember to uh, check those out as well. Uh, you can learn how to go. Now you can learn also, like me, how to go stealth and finding books by getting Frank Florence's book. Uh, on book sourcing. It's $27. Just follow this link, bit.ly forward slash book sourcing. The price of the book is $27. I'm personally backing up his money back guarantee. Frank is very good about his uh, money back offer. Um, if you're not satisfied, but for any reason you have trouble, let me know and I'll personally um, uh, refund you the uh, purchase price myself. That's bit.ly forward slash book sourcing. If you haven't already, please go to Honest Online Selling. Sign up for my newsletter. It's free. A lot more ideas in there of how to make money selling products on Amazon and eBay. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.